the 15th episode of Ask About Change. My name is Isabella Brusati and I am the founder of Isabella Brusati Consulting. We help our clients leading and managing successfully organizational change management. In this episode, I am going to answer a very common question and uh, I'm going to mention Francine from Belgium. Thank you so much Francine for submitting uh, the question along with uh, many others. So it's a very hot topic. And uh, it is uh, what's a merger of equals? Uh, we read uh, on uh, newspapers that a merger of equal has uh, happened. It's usually you know, this uh, um, common statements from the CEOs uh, of the two companies basically are becoming one. So merger means that you got company A and company B that are getting together and actually forming a new co. And uh, merger of equals is considered basically a merger of uh, two companies, so A and B in this case, uh, that uh, basically have the same type of uh, recognition power so that when they come together the decisions are made equally. So they basically there is no difference between one and the other. I must say that this concept of merger of equal is more a uh, wishful thinking than reality because even though the two companies may look very similar on paper, in reality when the two companies get together 99.9% of the time there is still one of the two that uh, has more bargaining power and more decisional power than the other. Uh, the most famous case I would say of uh, a merger of equals uh, that uh, was announced as such but that in reality was not uh, is a Damsley Chrysler uh, deal that actually turned out to be one of the most disastrous uh, um, deals of history. And that's because whilst both uh, uh, Damsler and uh, Chrysler said that we are equals coming together, the first uh, has always thought that it had more weight than the other. And this of course is going to create a lot of friction when making decisions, when going through implementation on, for example, the culture that is going to prevail. If it was literally of equal, it shouldn't prevail, actually it should be a combination of the two cultures. Same thing, you know, a struggle of power of, uh, for example, who's going to be the CEO, who's going to be in key positions and so on. And they talk about merger of equals, uh, smile a little bit because uh, it's more like a marketing tool, as I call it, because in reality it's extremely unlikely that two companies coming together are exactly equals. Uh, because when we look behind the scenes, which is something that of course uh, is not always possible for everyone, I mean if you work as a consultant you see this, um, these elements, uh, there is always one company that has got more power than the other. And unless uh, the uh, premises are uh, laid down very very openly from the very beginning, so before the deal is sealed, uh, having this uh, unbalance uh, in uh, the medium period uh, may well likely lead to a failure of the deal because the psychological contract and uh, all the expectations that uh, the other company they thought to be on the equal side uh, basically get frustrated. Not only a merger is uh, the most difficult and complex uh, change management initiative to pull out, uh, but if you also have internal problems, friction struggles uh, uh, coming from a, a misunderstanding of the fact that uh, this equality actually doesn't exist, uh, well things can go per shape pretty pretty quickly. Merger of equals, uh, nice marketing uh, label that in reality actually does not uh, uh, fit uh, to what really happens in the business world. If you have any question that you would like to be answered in Ask About Change, the next episode, please comment in the comment box below. Alternatively, you can comment on our Twitter account, on our Facebook and on our LinkedIn. This episode are also available on our website www.isabellabrusati.com and I'll see you on the next episode of Ask About Change. Thank you so much for watching.